That right there are some beautiful fish. Nine of them to be exact. It's my German Shepherd Lobo, my very excited Blue Bay Shepherd Kurgan, Lycan Shepherd Ulu, and a nine month old Lycan Shepherds Puko and Kbar. We also have uh, my Renaissance Bulldog Magi, he's pretty excited too. No, nah, no, nah, get on. You gotta wait a minute. This is gonna be a uh, pack bong video. Lobo, no. Uh, what I call a uh, pack bang. I hope you like it. We're going to uh, distribute this in just a moment. The dogs are merely in the kennel, so I can distribute this and shoot the intro. They do all live in the house, for those who will ask. Well, there you see, we got the uh, fish all distributed around the yard. And uh, we're about to let uh, the rest of them out and uh, do a pack feeding. Now, uh, the object of these pack feedings is uh, it helps me develop and maintain a healthy pack hierarchy with the, with the dogs. It allows them to establish that amongst themselves. And I'm here to uh, oversee it and uh, step in if there's any problems. I find uh, this helps me uh, to have several males together without any issues, uh, unneutered males. It also translates over to uh, how they behave with other dogs they encounter off leash, uh, especially dogs that are uh, not very socialized. And you can see the benefits of that in uh, my hundreds of off leash videos with them demonstrating that uh, on the channel. Looks like I might have a little something on the lens here. Hopefully, uh, got that wiped off. Just a moment. You guys ready? Kurgan's happy. He loves fish and uh, there's plenty of fish around. Now some dogs will get more food than others in this exercise. This isn't the only food that they will get today. They will get an individual meal also. Magi starting in. Ulu here, she's still blowing her winter coat, as you can see. Kevar also still blowing his winter coat. Hey buddy, coming over to say hi and thank you for the food. You're welcome buddy. Bar uh, just turned nine months old uh, a few days ago. It's an F2 Lycan Shepherd from the Lycan Shepherd Project. This is his brother Puko here. He's also coming over to say thank you for the food and hi. See these guys are very sociable even when eating. I raised them to be that way. Again, these pack feedings are all of us together. If I wasn't filming it, I'd probably be out here with a little food eating myself amongst them. Again, these really help to develop and maintain a healthy pack hierarchy with the dogs and prevent me from having fights. Again, I own several unneutered males here. You can see they all coexist just fine. Long coated Shepherd Lobo. He's the oldest here in the yard right now. He turns six the end of May for those who will ask. Feed my dogs is called the Barf Diet, developed by Dr. Ian Billinghurst. He's a veterinarian. He developed a diet uh, to help address some of the modern uh, skeletal and uh, 
other issues uh, plaguing modern dogs because of an insufficient overly processed diet. I've provided links to a couple of his books in the description if you're interested in learning more. I get nothing for providing those links. I just uh, like sharing them because I think they're worthwhile books. One of the books is uh, Give Your Dog a Bone, and the other one's called Grow Your Pups with Bones. Bone is a very important part of the canine diet. Raw bones, like in this fish, or raw chicken bones are perfectly safe for your dog. It's the cooked bones that are dangerous. Cooking the bone changes the consistency of the bone and makes it indigestible and prone to both obstructions and perforations of the bowel. Raw bones won't do that, but as I always say, you do want to make sure they're chewing them up adequately enough. Chewing is the first stage of digestion. For those dogs that are gulpers, that uh, haven't learned to chew their food adequately, feeding, feeding them large pieces fully frozen like this is a very uh, common way to address that. Again, nine months old. This fish is frozen. I prefer to feed fish frozen because uh, my dogs do all live in the house and it prevents them from getting full of uh, fish oil and guts and uh, keeps them from smelling fishy, which is a big plus if they live in the house. Trust me. <laughs> Canines in the wild do scavenge and eat frozen food in the cold months. They are carnivores, but they are also uh, scavengers of opportunity. And uh, because of that, they often do uh, find and scavenge and eat frozen things in the wild. It does not hurt them. Magi is a Renaissance Bulldog. It's a breed of athletic uh, working bulldog I've spent the last 30 years developing. If you'd like to learn more about them, uh, I've got a couple of good uh, playlists down below in the playlist section of my channel. Shows them uh, working and uh, all the various dogs I've produced over the last 30 years. Now it's kind of funny of the dogs in the yard. The two that uh, have stockpiled a couple fish are both Kurgan and uh, K bar over there. like to touch and handle my dogs when they're eating. Again, it uh, prevents things like food aggression, which is very important, especially if you have children. You want to desensitize your dogs to a uh, human touch. I don't believe in playing the power game where you uh, submit your dog and take the food away from them. Sure, yes, that does work uh, in certain circumstances, but I also find that uh, it uh, creates a dog that will uh, act that way to uh, lesser members in the pack. Those lesser members might be your children. And so uh, I, I prefer, I think the better way to approach it uh, when dealing with food with them is to just desensitize them to it, uh, your to human touch. I've already provided the food. I don't need to uh, prove how dominant I am uh, when uh, teaching them to not uh, growl or be aggressive it's better to just teach them that your touch is not a threat to them taking the food and you can see my dogs you know he he welcomes me patting him and that because he knows i've already given him the food i'm not going to take it now if you disagree with me on that hey that's okay these are just my dogs you uh can make any video you want on uh, your views on that I am a former animal warden, two decades experience doing that. 
have uh, raised, bred, rescued, and trained dogs for about three decades. But uh, I don't pass myself off as any kind of dog guru. I'm just some guy on YouTube, as I uh, always say. Again, you can see these guys like being touched. They don't uh, picture me as a threat at all. You don't see them tense up when I reach for them when they're eating. You don't see them tense up when I come over to them. They're totally relaxed around me when they're eating. And I think that's what you want. You want your dog to be relaxed. Again, you want to desensitize them to your presence when they're eating. Now, Magi was one of those uh, two food aggressive uh, bulldog pups I had on my channel. Uh, almost a couple years back. You'll see them uh, starring in my uh, puppy food aggression series. And you can see now, no aggression at all. Good girl. Coming over to tell me thanks for the food. Isn't he beautiful? I'm really happy with the way Pluto's turning out. I mean, I love the way all the all the dogs in this breeding turned out, but I'm especially happy with him. He's uh, really got the total package of what I'm looking for so far. He's got the uh, type of structure uh, I'm looking for as far as leg to body ratio, the size, and he really has a uh, outgoing, sweet temperament, which is important. And he's just about Kurgan's size right now. I think he's going to be a bigger dog than Kurgan. He might not be taller, but he's definitely built heavier than Kurgan. And this is him after he blew his winter coat. So this is his spring coat. They always look a little lighter. That. Again, you see here a yard full of males. There's four unneutered males here. Two uh, unspayed females. And all getting along great. Again, it's all in how you socialize your dog. It has nothing to do with the breed. Magi here is from a fighting breed. I have other videos where I have multiple bulldogs in the yard. Dogs want to be pack animals. They want a structure, and they want a strong leader to follow. And if you provide that structure and strong leadership, they all coexist just fine. Too many people don't let their dogs be dogs. And I think that causes a lot of the uh, problems some people have with them when it comes to training and uh, their dogs being destructive and other behaviors like that. It's, in, it's as important for us to understand what our dogs are trying to communicate to us as it is for uh, us to try to teach them what we're trying to communicate to them. It should be a two-way street.
It's interesting to see the way the different ways uh, some of these guys eat. Uh, Kurgan starts at the head. Buko started at the tail. Magi started at the head. Lulu uh, ate the head of one of hers and the tail of the other. And then you got the oddball K-Bar who's eaten from the side. <laughs> You the nonconformist K-Bar? K-Bar is kind of the uh, the clown of the group. Uh, he's uh, the kind of the uh, the jokester. He's got kind of a unique personality. Kurgan over there, uh, seeing if he can maybe get a piece of Pucos. He's got his piece there. Now he's going to scout around the yard and try to find something else. He wants me to distract somebody, so he wants me to start petting and play with him. So other dogs will come over and then he'll, he'll swoop in on their stuff. The crafty old man. He's not really that old, he just turned four. Still blowing up his coat a little bit. That's what the tufts of hair are on his tail. He looks about uh, 15 pounds lighter with his summer coat uh, compared to his winter coat. It's like, come on, Dad. Just distract him for a little bit for me. Since K-Bar has two pieces. Lulu's smart. She's actually laying on top of her second piece. Dogs are much smarter than people give them credit for. If you know what to watch for and you know how to read them, they, they're very smart. See, he has no problem powering through that fully frozen fish. These tilapia were about uh, two pounds a piece. They're pretty, pretty good size. A couple of them were even three pounds. If you'd like to learn more about how to feed a raw diet, I've provided plenty of links in the video description down below. Take a look there before asking me any questions. If you uh, disagree with the way I feed my dogs or uh, you don't like the fact that uh, I repeat uh, some of the facts in my videos for uh, new time viewers, just find another, another video to watch. Uh, don't complain, uh, I, I don't care. Again, there's lots of other stuff for you to watch on YouTube.
see what happens when uh, Puko's piece is gone. Where he's gonna get more from. That's when things always get interesting in these videos. Mr. Kurgan here coming over to get pet. No fishy kisses. For those who ask, how do you clean your dogs up uh, after they're done eating uh, raw food? Well, you know, it depends on what they ate, how dirty they got. You know, sometimes they don't need anything. Other times I can use a baby wipe or a soapy washcloth. Uh, oh, nice burp, buddy. Uh, soapy washcloth, uh, sometimes uh, they, they get a bath with the hose if they get really dirty. It just depends. Kind of like when you're feeding your kids. Sometimes you get away with little cleanup and sometimes they get spaghetti sauce all over their head. <laughs> Got magi from a fighting breed eating right next to Kurgan. No issues. It's not the breed, it's how you socialize them. Most of my work is with bull breeds and pit bulls. I started doing this stuff with them before I progressed to shepherds. You can do this with any dogs. It's all in how you socialize and raise them. She's a pretty fast eater. She's finishing off uh, one fish and she's eating half of another one. She's been uh, working on two at the same time. Yeah, we got Puko now with no fish. Let's see what he does. Those uh, couple bones you see in the yard are what's left of that black bear. Moving the grate to uh, get some stuff that fell through. Yeah, buddy. Coming over 
to say hi. Making a mess everywhere she goes, and who go cleaning it up? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're gonna get that from her. We'll go just about done with his piece. off of him. coat so those big furry cheeks of his uh, are gone until the new coat grows back in. Going to be able to hang on to that other piece there K-Bar? Let's see.
see how much higher uh, Puko's back is than Lobo's there. He's quite a bit bigger than Lobo. K-Bar stands taller than Lobo now, too. And Lobo's a big German Shepherd. He goes uh, 90 pounds in lean athletic condition. I mean, if I had him fat, I could have him well over 100. Puko trying to lift up the orange grates so he can get any scraps of food underneath him. He'll move. He'll move those things. They're playing now at the eight. Uh, Magic, I go into the bathroom for just a moment. Jumping up on Kurgan. Puko's uh, got a piece of fish inside the doghouse over there. saying, hey, Dad, you're not getting my fish. Get away. <coughs> See? I'm selling the other dogs no fish for you. Now I'll show you, even though he acted like that to them, you can see he's totally fine with me. Again, because he's been desensitized to human touch around feud. And what he was doing with the other dogs there was not aggression. He's just telling him, hey, that's my fish. Leave it alone. <laughs> Here, 
everybody getting playful after a good meal. Plus, they want to distract uh, K Bar here. See, they all play and then they all go over. Ah, there goes. Ooh, look at that. K Bar defending his fish from death. Way to go, buddy. See there, the Kulu is the dominant female, and so what she did there when uh, Magi was playing was she just kind of pulled rank on her and put her in place. And again, you know, sometimes unspayed females can fight worse than uh, unneutered males, and that, that showed you again. I've got four unneutered males here, two unspayed females. One getting ready to come into heat and uh, all uh, coexisting uh, peacefully with a high value food like fish in the yard that they're all eating. I really found that these pack feedings uh, again help develop and maintain a healthy pack hierarchy. The dogs don't fight. That Kurgan over there going to the bathroom. The dogs don't fight and again went out interacting with uh, other dogs uh, out in public, uh, they, they, they don't uh, react badly when they come across unsocialized dogs also. Uh, so just for people who are asking, people often wonder what uh, stool looks like from a dog that eats raw food. There you go. They're small stools that came from Kurgan. They're small stools that are uh, well formed. Uh, uh, they, they don't smell bad. Again, it's because most of the food is digested where uh, when your dogs are eating kibble, uh, a lot of that food is useless fillers and uh, they just pass right through your dogs. Just a moment while I clean this up. Well, there you have it. Everybody having fun. Well fed. I hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell down below. You'll get email notifications when my new videos come out. Bye from me, Mr. Kurgan, Miss Magi. We got K Bar over there, Ulu, Lobo, and of course, Mr. Puko. That's all. See ya.